Hey, DC Right Hammer here. Time travel, pop culture references, and meta humor make Fur Lodge a must read for adventure enthusiasts, especially those born in the 80s and 90s. Let me explain. Before I get into the review, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more indie author writing and publishing content, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up to help me out, as well as to help out Sean McMahon, the author of Fur Lodge. And quick bias alert, like the last time I reviewed an indie author, I am an independent author myself, and I have had the pleasure of meeting Sean McMahon uh, a number of times. I did interview him on Writer's Row in the past, so wanted to let everyone know about that up front. But Diving into Fur Lodge, it, we follow a group of friends going to a place called Fur Lodge. It's a lodge in a wooded area um, for a friend's weekend, uh, a time to get away, a time to celebrate a friend's 30th birthday, and to kind of kick back and enjoy themselves. The story is mostly told from the point of view of two main characters, one named Hal, who dresses as a Ghostbuster, and one named Kara, who dresses as Velma from Scooby-Doo. Wait, let me back up a second. So they actually had a costume party later on in their trip to Fur Lodge, and that's why they're dressed as those characters, not because they came to Fur Lodge like that. But back to the story, uh, the opening chapter is incredible. It is, um, as I said, the book is about time travel, and so you start middle of their experience in their whole time travel journey, or it might be a little bit later in their time travel journey, but. The whole setup of that first chapter is really cool. It's this complex web of different things that are happening um, sort of outside of the normal time scope that you're used to, like where you're seeing perspectives of things moving in slow motion and how one thing really affects other things like a domino effect. Um, and I describe it as this Rube Goldberg machine. If you're familiar with those, those odd contraptions where you do one little thing over here and it knocks over a dozen little things, it pulls a string, and suddenly an egg is cracking into a pan. And I couldn't get that first chapter out of my head, which then makes you really push forward throughout the story. When am I going to get back to that scene? You keep asking yourself. And good news, uh, there are chapter titles, and each chapter title tells you where at in the timeline you're at. And that's, that's very helpful. I think a lot of people will say, don't waste your time on chapter titles or putting any kind of descriptor of the, the chapters in front. Readers are going to ignore that. Well, this author, Sean, he breaks that rule here, rule in quotes, and it really lends itself to feeling like you're on the journey with these characters, and you start to maybe flip back and forth, like, well, what happened in this, this you know, part of the story? What happened here? And those chapter titles really lend themselves to that. And so, you know, our main characters kind of go through the story, and then there's this big event. I'm going to keep it relatively spoiler-free. Uh, and suddenly their lives are turned upside down. Um, they were moving forward in their lives, and suddenly they are now forced to relive the same set of, like, 33 or 36 hours over and over again. Why? Well, that's part of their journey. They don't know why. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, you've seen, if you've seen the movie like Groundhog's Day or any kind of, you know, replay type of stories or, or time travel replay type of stories, you get to see these scenes from multiple perspectives and you get to see how the characters interact and something different might happen. Um, and you get a lot of that here. What I really liked about these replays, or as they're called in the book, restarts, and the main characters are called restarters, is that uh, McMahon does a great job of giving us those extra perspectives, taking us around sort of 360 of a scene, rather than just replaying the same events and even using the same descriptors. Uh, and by reinventing those scenes, you get more bang for your buck out of them. There's so much more to meets the eye than what we first saw when we walked by. And oftentimes, when people try to do that, like, you know, in theory, it sounds really cool to do that, right? Like, you get all these different perspectives and different things happen, the way they interact with it. That sounds really cool in theory. The problem with that is it's tough to get the reader to be excited about seeing that same scene. If they've already been there and they've made up their mind about what happened, seeing it from a different perspective or having things act out a little differently, that can be boring. Totally not the case in this book. Each scene is sort of reinvented, restarted, 
um, when the characters go back there to figure out what it is they're trying to do with their lives now that they're replaying events. And in and amongst this, what I describe as a modern fantasy, it's really, so it's not, it's like science fiction you think, right? Because it's time travel. But I think McMahon does a great job of inventing the rules and straying too far from concrete science, although there's some of that in there, um, but not trying to explain it away with math or anything like that. Just, this is just kind of the way it's happening. The characters are experiencing it. We're experiencing it. And these are just the rules. This isn't trying to say this is how time travel works. And I really appreciated that. And, you know, about a halfway through the book, the plot sort of pivots into um, finding out why we're here. You start to figure some of that stuff out. Um, and now it's this clear set goal. We have to move forward and do this. And then, then it's very interesting. Now that you're oriented in these restarts, um, how are they going to now really navigate time and space to some extent in order to you know achieve their goal and so that that's really the heart of the book at that point is figuring out you know where we go from here or should i say when we go from here and so i really enjoyed it there um ton of highlights ton of funny scenes where the characters are like they have this meta humor of like hey we're time travelers like what does this mean and they start to laugh at themselves and laugh at their circumstances that's balanced out with some very serious, you know, touching scenes that, you know, kind of pull on your heartstrings for the characters that you do care about. Um, and I thought the story really wrapped itself up nicely towards the end where it gave you enough to feel some closure on this story and left enough things open that you're excited for the, the next book in the series. And on that note, I believe another book in the series, I think it's book number five, is coming out pretty soon with when I'm releasing this video. So the link will be in the description down below for the first book, but you should check out the whole series. Last thing I'll say, um, this book is pretty thick. Uh, it is a big book in that sense. However, don't let that discourage you. I know some people are like, I'm not going to touch a book that's 500 pages or more. Um, this book is a fast read. Um, you know, the font size, the, the number of chapters, rapid fire that come at you. It reads much faster than the typical 550 page book or whatever it is. Um, so don't let that deter you from getting into this. You're really going to, you know, miss out if you don't read a book like this just because of how thick it is. So with all that said, Fur Lodge by Sean McMahon is getting five stars from me, and it is well worth that. I think everyone should check this book out if you are interested in time travel, pop culture references. They're all over the place in this book, meta humor, and so on. So make sure to pick up a copy of Fur Lodge, get into the series, and that series is wrapping up, I believe, with the fifth book that's coming out very soon. Thanks, everyone, for watching. If you like this content, and other content that I put out, make sure to subscribe down below, give this video a thumbs up, and I will catch you all next time.